Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Trap on the Boom Bus Channel, Bears Podcast by Bears Fan. I'm your host Terry, and today we are recapping the week three loss to the Indianapolis Colts. So I started off my first take with singing How Do I Say Goodbye to Yesterday? Boys the Man style, but you know, I only took that out because I don't want to hear myself singing on the replay. <laughs> but Man, I mean, not a lot, not a lot to do. I wasn't even going to do this, man. I, I'm just, I'm full. I'm sleepy. I'm just disappointed, but you know, whatever. It's fine. I'm sure everybody wants a space to react in real time and all that. So I am here for you, my better Bears fans. So what, what to talk about? Um, I think, well, let me say this. First of all, uh, I am not ESPN. I'm not sports media, so I'm not going to sit here and make uh, definitive statements about things that I can't see until I watch the film. And we all know those people don't watch the film at all and still will sh- show up telling you what's what, even though they don't even know football. Um, shout out to Kurt Warner for starting this beef uh, in the sports media, but he's right. So anyway, I won't do that, but I will talk about what I could see. Um, if you are new, subscribe, please be in the community. You don't got to subscribe to be in the community because that's where I'm a more most weeks. I'll be in there talking live throughout the game. Um, and that's where I was today. So I said before the game, uh, with the performance of the Colts run defense and with Buckner out, multiple tight ends trying to run the ball and to Waldron's credit they did do uh, a lot of that uh we just couldn't we couldn't run the ball um so this this is the issue well one of the thousands of issues with <laughs> with, with fans in today's sports is that there are so many different like factors and what you know causes a problem that most fans just they only know one or two and age so that's what they try to blame it like i was pointing out like i guarantee when we get to the film there's going to be a number of coverage sacks and the broadcasters did a good job of saying that but i can't see down the field so i can't definitively tell you hey these were bad pass concepts or whatever um when we get to the film we'll see that but because fans watching on TV can't see downfield, all they see is the pressure that comes from the offensive line, and they say the offensive line is bad. It reminds me of um, actually no, I even uh, with us last year, I put up the stats once the NFL.com opened up this new advanced stats that Justin Fields or our offensive line last year we had. We had a really good time to pressure, which means teams weren't getting quick pressure on us. So that's the problem, again, especially with some of these advanced stats. So people will be like, hey, we have a high pressure rate, but that doesn't always mean it. That doesn't always mean what you think. So you got to look at multiple data points. So we got a high pressure rate. Yes, but our time to pressure is super long which means that the quarterback's holding on to the ball we also had the highest time to throw which means the quarterback's holding on to the ball and so it's not always just the o-line's fault but that's just an example um but anyway as far as the run game yeah that that's a personnel issue um more so than the scheme and so again people are gonna say well terrible play call and I've been saying for years, people don't even know what the play call is. They don't even know what they mean when they say that. So you got to really look through it all. And for me, watching the run game these last few weeks and then watching it today, it's just a personnel thing. Like we can blame Nate Davis for pass pro. You get Matt Pryor who comes in and he's a similar type of player and that he's, he's big. He takes up space. He has more power. But he's got slow feet and he doesn't move his feet. So there's that. Um, So I look at, again, the run game not being able to go. And then you get all these people once again looking at stats. Oh, my God, Caleb threw this many times. You got to run the ball. We have ran the ball. Now, 
do you want to like what's the line what's the line to say hey how many times do we have a negative gain or a minimal gain before it's enough so you know if everybody's got different opinions on that that's fine but for me I watch it and I say we we have ran the ball and we definitely had a concerted effort early in this game but man we we just we get no movement we get no movement now for me I would like to vary it up. I don't think everything needs to be inside zone. I mean, you look around the league and almost every play is inside zone for almost every team. But still, and knowing Waldron and where he comes from, that's going to be his bread and butter. But still, that doesn't mean that you can't change it up and do some other stuff. And look, I don't know. Uh, there's been a, a ton of talk, which... I find it interesting just because these are things that I talked about before, but no one really cared. But now there are so many big voices and big platforms talking about the state of the game that now is becoming a conversation. And you start to hear more stories about conversations with coaches and conversations with college players. And you got former coaches talking like Belichick, guys that just got out of the league and Saban. And you start to hear all these conversations. And I'm starting to really think that coaches aren't I wouldn't say that coaches don't know how to coach, but coaches aren't coaching like they used to either. And I've said for a long time, because, you know, talking about the quarterback play, I had to look it up. I posted this six years ago when I talked about the impact of the spread offense. And I talked about how that was impacting offensive line play, quarterback play. But my point in all that is that I usually would give the benefit of the doubt to coaches, especially, again, because of my own bias as a coach. And I've always admitted that. But I'm starting to realize that and I've always known there's people that sneak through because of nepotism and, you know, taking credit for things. But I'm starting to realize that, man, just because you're a coordinator in the NFL or head coach in the NFL, all that it really does not make you equal to the next one. And so whereas I would probably lean more towards personnel, uh, I would lean more towards execution. Some of these things I'm starting to think coaching as well, because I don't care if I come from the McVay tree or the Shanahan zone West Coast tree. If my team can't run zone, then let's start running gap. Let's start running trap. Let's start doing something else that might be better suited to what we can do. Let's run out of the shotgun with jet sweeps. Like, let's do something. And I just feel like, and it's not just the Bears thing, it's the whole league, but I feel like we stay with the same inside zone. It doesn't go nowhere. So all of that talk about the run game because that sets up the rest of this game. Once the run game doesn't work, at least not effective enough, then we start passing. And when you get Caleb in the passing mode, three weeks in a row, he presses. He starts to press. And my biggest issue, and again, we'll get to the film and maybe the past concepts are terrible. We'll see. But my biggest issue with Caleb is it doesn't matter to me what's happening down the field or the pressure. Once you get to a certain point in the play, the play is dead dead to play live, live to fight another day and he never does it i wouldn't say never maybe once or twice but for the most part he always tries to make it a second play and again i know that's the cool thing in the league that's what the elite guys are paid for i know that's the style of play he always played but you're in a different league now and you gotta recognize the talent and, and again, I get it. It was like USC, these guys didn't have the talent, so I had to Houdini and make a play. This, the league, that's not going to work most of the time. And so for me, I watched our offense kind of, you know, do what it's been doing, which is very below average protection. I wouldn't say it was immediate pressure. But it was below average protection. The pockets are never really clean. Um, either it's immediate pressure or it's delayed pressure. It's never really clean. And so 
when you uh, again you got a quarterback like Williams where he's going to try to keep the play going and that turns into a fumble that turns into a big sack that turns into throwing the ball up getting intercepted and, and those are mistakes that when you're playing a team like the Colts where there is no conversation about Anthony Richardson maybe because he wasn't number one I don't know but there is no conversation about how bad he is and that doesn't and it's the same thing like Lamar I, I don't pleasure in saying that like the issues that Lamar has are the ones I talked about him coming out of college the issues that Anthony Richardson has are the ones I talked about when he was coming out of college I'm just saying what it is I'm not saying it to be mean but like that's that's who uh Richardson was in college and that's who he continues to be and again I said he's going to lose them the game if we let him but Caleb wanted to match him and being trash so or making bad decisions and so that kind of led us you know to be in the hole where most of the game is zero zero seven to three so you look at the turnovers you look at the special team play in the flags and that makes up the game and that's pretty much what I was expecting because you know our offense I still believe one they might just click and really, you know, ball out, especially on an average defense like the Colts. But if we were going to play our similar way, which we did, and if the Colts were going to play what I know they play on offense, which is just hand the ball off and Richardson make mistakes, then I knew this was going to be a tight game that was going to kind of come down to the turnovers. And that's what it was. And we just didn't capitalize. So, um, offensively again I gotta go to the tape to get more into it but it's just frustrating that Caleb continues to try to play hero ball and I don't know what they're saying to him um yes in my um I was gonna say my wildest dreams not my wildest dreams in my dream scenario would I love Caleb to be like watch the film be like hey I should stop that yes I would but that's not usually how that goes. That's not the nature of most players. So I really would love for the coaching staff to put the reins on him and really drill it and coach him hard so that he's not making these mistakes. But to be honest, I, I don't know that that's even possible with a staff that is so scared of getting fired and so worried about making him happy. So and that's a bit of a narrative I so I, I I admit that but still that's just that's been the feeling this whole time so um it's, it's really disappointing because again if you just throw the ball away on some of those plays instead of taking the sack if you uh put the ball out of bounds on some of those plays instead of throwing picks if you have some type of anywhere accuracy on the deep balls instead of missing by 20 yards this is a completely winnable game we should be three and oh right now we should be easily three and oh right now like obviously we beat the titans obviously it was a close game with the texans and then this was a close game i don't mean like we should have squeaked by i mean we should easily be three and oh and that is with the offense just running a very simplistic ball control offense. But our run game has been terrible. And I don't like, yes, Shelton is bad, but I don't want to hear about the O-line. This is darn near the same O-line. We ran amazing last year. The year before that, we ran the ball amazing. And I said before, because I, I was uh, Bears fans arguing, of course, and people were like, the O-line sucks, the O-line sucks. And again, as I said, they're starting to become, not even starting, we are now at a point where people only talk about the offensive line pass blocking ability. Like, if they can't pass block, the O-line sucks, which is crazy to me. There's two parts to the game, and you would think, this year of all years people would understand that but people will pull that and they pulled that in years before and i had to fight them because we were a great run blocking o-line even if we weren't a great pass pro o-line but this year man we are not getting it done and 
I do think Shelton at the pivot makes uh, a lot of that harder. But still, these are the guys that knew how to run block before. So um, it, it's definitely not just Shelton. And so the run game where we can't control the clock. And then Caleb, where we re he's really not in control of the game right now. It, it's just it's, it's becoming very frustrating. And then defensively, I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. Anthony Richardson is giving you the game. His accuracy is crazy erratic. And his decision making is bad. And... For the most part, I think early on we were able to stop Jonathan Taylor, but we just got wore down. It was one of those classic cases where the offense just couldn't do anything and they leaned and leaned and leaned on the defense until finally start popping some big gains. And again, they're built to run the ball. So the fact that we were able to be pretty solid against them in the first half just shows you how good our run defense is but you can't keep it up forever um especially when the offense is in and off the field or giving you short fields so yeah man the, the game uh i think in a nutshell it was pretty easy to kind of look at it and before the game and then during the game and say yeah this is probably how this game is going to go especially if we didn't become a little more efficient on offense and even though we picked it up a bit um it was just a little it was a little uh too little too late so yeah i'm sure there's more to talk about but we'll i will get on the film tomorrow and we'll really dive into it again really start thinking about some of the things you want to see out of the film so that um i could be on the lookout for that but yeah other than that man go to the comment section let me know what you think share it around get the conversation started thumbs up subscribe and remember stay up and bear down